Hi, I'm Liz Jetchy and I'm from Law. I'm with Liz Goodwin, the CEO of VAP, and we're here to, to ask some interesting questions from her speech. So, so Liz, um, you had a really interesting presentation. Please talk me through about the main points of uh, helping businesses to overcome their fear to drive towards the circular economy. Well, I think a lot of businesses don't know where to start because there's, there's a lot of information out there about the macro level but not very much about what it means for an individual business and so they don't know whether it actually um, is about some small change they need to make or some fundamental different business model they need, something that's going all the way down their supply chain or something they can control within their own business operations. So I think it's about them understanding what the options are for them, and then helping them to understand all the financial risks and the benefits, what some of the problems might be along the way. And then finding a small way of piloting it, so finding a small way of, of experimenting, seeing how it works. If it works, then do it more, and if it doesn't work, then have a little rethink. So it's one of the roles that that has, is, is helping businesses to go through that process of thinking about their business and how they can make a difference. Um, as part of that bigger picture. So the IPCC came out with a really interesting report about climate change, saying climate change is the biggest threat that we face. How can the resource industry help tackle this problem? Well, we, we all know that the huge um, environmental benefits of being more resource efficient and making better use of resources, um, the carbon benefits as well as the material savings. So we must keep on our efforts to um, do what we can to help tackle climate change. Um, but there's also the whole adaptation side of climate change as well, and um, being thinking about how businesses can adapt to um, operating in a different in a different climate. So I think there are two angles to it, but it's fundamental part. Thank you. Thanks, Liz. I'm here with Dustin Benton from Green Alliance, and I'm catching up with him after the Results Revolution presentation. So, Dustin, what was the most important part from the presentation, and how can we drive towards a circular economy? The thing that I saw was that there are kind of two sorts of uh, there's two sorts of issues that arise with the circular economy. Two groups of issues. One is, I guess, resource efficiency. So the really obvious stuff that we know we need to do. Businesses have been doing for a long time, and it's about keeping the cost base down. So we know that non-labor costs, particularly in manufacturing, have risen over the last couple of years, whereas labor costs are falling. And I think that manufacturers are beginning to see we've got to focus on this, just like we have to focus on energy efficiency. Important, reasonable straightforward, we know about the costs, we know that it's, it's the thing to do, but it's not very exciting, unfortunately. I mean, I love energy efficiency, I'm sure everyone else does, but it's not the first thing that sort of you think of when you get up in the morning. And then the other side of things is the much more innovative, exciting, interesting stuff, and that's where we get onto both technological innovation and business model innovation. So a business model innovation is something like Lyft, the car sharing uh, company that has managed to disrupt some of the new car manufacturers by essentially getting other people into your car so you can share and become much, much more efficient. That's a business model that's got some opportunity to grow. And the technological innovation side is almost more exciting, but hugely risky, and all the more exciting for that. So I, I was up in uh, Edinburgh talking to Green Investment Bank last week uh, about some of the bioeconomy opportunities in Scotland, and we heard this brilliant presentation from a scientist talking about the bioeconomy opportunities in Scotland and some of the really exciting new technologies that involve pulling proteins out of uh, waste or byproduct materials and then feeding those to fish to offset the need for, you know, to put more fish into fish farming. Uh, so there's, you've got both a sustainability angle and a circular economy angle. These are really exciting, massive opportunities to grow. God knows we're going to need a lot of fish in the future. And this sort of technology is exciting, new, innovative, highly risky, and I think absolutely part of the picture. Thank you, Dustin. And now with Chris Sherwin from Seymour Powell. Hi Chris, that was a really interesting presentation. And um, so what can we do as UK to design out waste? Um, well I think one of the things we could do is actually start talking to designers. Um, so I think, um, I wonder how much the waste industry um, does actually engage with you know, organisations like us and um, you know, talk, talk to design consultancies. Um, you know, we sit at the front end, you know, we design all of those things that ultimately will end up as waste. Obviously, a waste manager, you know, waste waste companies would be 
responsible for processing and disassembling all of those things and I definitely think there is a good, good enough communication channels between those two organisations. If I wandered the floor now, how many designers do you think I would, I would meet? Probably not that many and at the same time I don't know whether waste companies are particularly you know, see their customers as being as, as being designers. Um, I definitely think as a as a country, it would be great to join up the front and the back end and um, to talk and work a, work a lot um, together.